chance to deport Imam for anti-Semitic hate speech. On August 26th, a French court decided to deport an Imam, who's, um, Hassan Ikiusen, that's a very difficult name, I'm sorry, I don't know, who was born in France but held a Moroccan citizenship to Morocco. Gerard Dalmanin, the Minister of the Interior of France, posted a tweet later that day, which roughly translates to, quote, the Council of State validates the expulsion of Mr. E. Equiusen, who holds and propagates in particular anti-Semitic comments in contrary to equality between women and men. Hassan, in fi uh, famous for his controversial anti-Semitic comments and misogyny has a wide following with over 174,000 subscribers on YouTube and over 44,000 Facebook followers, which he operates from his home in Northern France. A lawyer of the interior minister claimed the Imam has quote, for years spread insidious ideas that are nothing less than incitement to hatred, to discrimination and to violence. However, the Imam's lawyers responded by saying that some of Hassan's anti-Semitic and misogynistic comments were at least 20 years old, elucidating that he never has been convicted for his actions in public. Hassan is the second imam to be expelled from France this year. In March, uh, Ahmad, uh, Ahmada Mahdi and his family were deported back to his East African country of uh, Comoros, after he was accused of preaching sermons, quote, contrary to the values of the Republic, after repeatedly reciting Hadith, Islamic scripture, that are derogatory to women. So I wanted to talk about this because this brings up several very important topics and questions. Because France has been dealing with this problem of Islamic separatism, they've been taking a very hard line stance against it, and some of their tactics involve throttling the what imams can say, forcibly closing mosques, and now deporting people who propagate values contrary to that of the Republic, which include, um, like this guy was promoting the subjugation of, you know, women being women of by men, women should be subservient to men. That is something that the Republic takes a very hard line stance against. Um, also, Good. the anti-Semitism allegedly that he's promoted. And um, this other guy that was deported in March, he was apparently deported for reciting Hadith. And so when he was deported, he said, I have no regrets because I was simply reciting the words of my prophet. Okay, okay, okay. Here's the question, okay? The Quran also has anti-woman verses in them, Okay. So uh -huh. why would they stop at the Hadiths? Like, does France, is, is France, this government going to stop at reading the Hadiths, but not go all the way to reading the Quran? And if so, okay, so here's the question, okay? So the, there are Hadiths, Islamic scripture, that are anti-woman, and the guy was just reading them, and I'm like, this is anti-France, French value, out you go, okay? So now, if I, somebody openly reads the Quranic verses, if they don't then kick you out of the country for reading the quranic verses especially, especially the quranic verse that tells you that you need to beat your wife if you fear disobedience right there's a quranic verse specifically telling you that you need to it's not a good idea it's a command to beat your wife if after trying two other steps after if you fear not if she's disobedient if you just fear disobedience okay there's also a Quranic verse that in the same Quranic verse, it tells you that women are subservient to men. It literally says that. It says men are, um, and by the virtue of Allah has gifted men, men are uh, in charge of women. It says that clearly. Mm -hmm. It also says, tells you that um, men, what to do with a woman that you captured in war, right? How, uh, you know, so they're sex slaves, basically. It refers to sex slaves. Um, it tells you that they're halal to you to have sex with them. Um, my question is, if they say like, okay, we're not going to do this, we're going to do this for the Hadith and not for the Quran, is France recognizing the authority of the Quran? Do you know what I mean? Because that seems like a double standard. Like, are they saying that the Quran is like, why would they do this with the Hadith and not the Quran? Oh, I see what you mean. 
is like is the is yeah. the Francis government's official position that the Quran is a special kind of book? Because I don't think they would like to go there. So if the, the and French if they government don't, is now a Quranist. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, yeah. So I, I don't understand. So they can't do that. They cannot be like, okay, you, you can read the hadith, but you can't read the hadith like this. But you can read the Quran because that would mean that they're recognizing the divinity of this book if they do that. So they can't do that. So that means that they would have to apply the same standard to somebody reading the Quran, and that would be amazing. Imagine the Quran reading, reading certain verses in France will get you kicked out of the country. That would be insane. Is that what's coming next? Somebody try it. Like I think that's, if... it's, that's too much of a slippery slope thing to say that that's what's coming next. Because it, it could well, maybe be argued. This is me, this is pure speculation from me. They're saying like, okay, but you don't have to be the preaching or stressing these aspects of the Quran. You know okay. what I mean? What if you do? That's what I'm saying. Okay. At some point, somebody's going to do it. This is opening, okay? the, you know, this is opening certain doors. I mean, you could accuse me of the slippery slope fallacy, but there's literally two options here, okay? Somebody just reading that specific Quranic verse, okay? What will the Francis government do, okay? They either kick you out or they won't kick you out. Both of them seem kind of like, you know, the outcome of that is amazing, okay? Because if they don't kick you out for that, that means that the France government has, has recognized the divinity of the Quran. Okay, if they don't, because they're like hadith, you can't. The Quran, you can. But if they do, that would be even more amazing, because now reading the Quran, somebody has been kicked out of France for openly reading the Quran. And also, oh then we have to then oh we have to go with the Bible. What about the Bible? Because the exactly. Bible says, the Bible has verses in it that specifically says women should shut up, shut the hell up, and just submit to men. The Bible specifically says that. Would reading the Bible, would reading the Bible kick you, get you kicked out of France? By the way, these are, um, what are they? Are they like permanent residents or just like temporary immigrants? These are, these, these were what? Yeah, go on. Here's the other thing that we need to discuss. This guy was born in France. Well, he wasn't a French citizen though, was he? He held a Moroccan citizenship. I don't okay. know if he gave up his French citizenship. Um, I mean, obviously, he's not a French citizen. You can't kick out a French citizen. Right? Why not? The UK rendered Shamima Begum stateless. Okay, that was different. That, okay, first of all, I don't endorse that. Second of all, she joined ISIS. This would know, be a but it, This is along similar lines. It's one is obviously much this, more okay. than the other. Okay, this would be a much bigger news if France was kicking out a citizen. Like this would not be just like, oh look, like this would be this news would be blowing up right now. Like I don't think that's that's I don't think I don't think France is gonna take anyone's citizenship away over reading the headies. No, this guy must have not been a citizen. I don't think there's no way. I don't know. It it, but, There's no way. Okay, but here's the thing. What if that was the case? What if no, he was, was he had what if he was a dual citizen? But because he was a dual citizen, they wouldn't be rendering him stateless. So they just that would be outrageous. Process. Like taking someone's citizenship away, that would like devalue the entire point of your citizenship. Like that would like completely fundamentally destroy the mm -hmm. meaning of being French. No, I agree. I don't think I don't think that's what happened here. I mean, that okay, should I'm not be to, happening. I'm looking up more information, but everything in Google is in German right now. <laughs> um, what's crazy, though, is that, okay, let me let me what give you hell? some more there's details some... to maybe what play hell? devil's advocate a little bit. Why is pay, per, there's a Persian guy being absolutely racist in the live chat. Persian Wojak is saying, France citizenship is for white French people. It's their own country. <laughs> Like you're advocating and removing his citizenship. Like what it was he like said, why not, not a bunch of Arabs. Oh, shocking. A Persian nationalist is racist. Shocking. Oh, well, <laughs> shocking. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of racist. Um, oh, kind of. <laughs> oh my god, this guy is absolutely racist. Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. Yeah. 
right. and someone is pointing out yeah like shamima literally performed acts of violence or like was complicit in them it's much more extreme obviously i understand yeah. that it's much more extreme I'm but even me. that i even that shouldn't get you removed your citizenship shouldn't get even removed for that your citizenship I should agree. be permanent okay if you have committed acts of violence okay you get punished for it as a citizen you don't remove exactly. someone's citizenship away from them but yeah so here's the thing okay so the interior ministry said that he has you know spread these things that amount to incitement to violence and anti-semitism for all these years um and the his defense lawyer said basically okay but these you know happened more than 20 years ago and that he's never been public prosecuted for anything that he said in public and he said yes mr Equiosen is a conservative. He has made retrograde statements on women's place in society, but that does not constitute a serious threat to public order. The Interior Ministry representative retorted that the imam's words create fertile ground for separatism and even terrorism, insisting that he remains a an anti-Semite. So they're like, okay, this happened 20 years ago. He, we believe that he remains this way. And then the Interior Minister said that he would change the law if the judges, if the high court judges said that he would not be expelled. So I think that's like going too far. We are like, if you are not going to deport this guy, I'm going to take the step of changing the law so that you will. Uh, who's going to change the law? You can't just change the law. So that these the interior counts. minister said he warned that he would try to change yeah. the law if the judges that's, that's, of the high court in France he's found that they wouldn't Oh, expel. I'm going to change the laws. Sure, sure. Like, you're the interior minister. What do you think you can do? You're not, like, the entire the entirety of the parliament. Change well, the laws. Me, I don't know enough about the executive and legislative structure of how things work within it's, France to know if he has well, I, the authority to do something. I like don't that. know much about, I don't know anything about France's politics, but I'm pretty sure the interior minister is not just going to be able to just change the laws. <laughs> I don't think it works anywhere like that. Yeah. Um, but here, so Hale is from France and he's like, so late, uh, and he has some answers for us. He's saying he's Moroccan. He was born in France. He could have become French at 18, but he refused on the advice of his father because being Muslim and French are not compatible. Oh, okay. it's starting to come together. It's okay, so see, I was sense. right. I, I was right. If this guy was a French citizen, you would not be able to kick him out like that. And 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 for and good. Okay, and I'm glad that he didn't accept uh, the French citizenship so that you could kick out his RES, Right. So that's good. It worked out very well. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm actually. No, but I, no, I'm, he's bringing up a good point because this underlines this issue of separatism that France is facing. The idea and belief that being French and a Muslim are incompatible is what is at this, the fundamental issue at play here. Yeah. Wait, I was wrong about changing the laws. Uh, Fran wait, se France is a semi presidential system, ministers can uh, propose laws in parliament. Uh, uh gamer boy is saying interior ministers can change law in the uk wow this is weird okay i'm not i'm not familiar with the structure you could so like wow this is reducing the authority of the people if just a minister could just come like yep we're changing laws people like without okay yeah. sure that's that's weird I'm not just, thank you for uh, the input from uh solier i can't solier. pronounce anything in french Soleil apostille. I don't know, <laughs> but I appreciate their feedback because having people who are more familiar with these specific individuals is really helpful, especially since there's a huge language gap with stuff in French. I find that oftentimes in other languages, it's easier for me to find translations of these things. But when it comes to French news, oftentimes I can't find translations very easy. It's easier for me to find translations for the myriad of languages in India than for French. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, Bread of Life. I don't I don't agree with Bread of Life with Rebecca here. You want to read this? Um, Bread of Life is saying hijab is almost as scary as Saudi Arabia with their religious. Wait, people. hijab? Rip, ripping hijabs off of women. No, wait. Okay. You didn't read that right. Read it again. You said hijab. Read it again. What? You said hijab is also. Oh, France. France is almost as scary as Saudi Arabia with their religious intolerance. Ripping hijabs off of women. Okay, that is an extreme exaggeration my friend yeah yes okay yes, yes. <laughs> they first, there's many things that i disagree with how they go about these things but they are not as extreme as saudi arabia that's just like patently untrue the consequences fact, are not nearly as severe 
first of all. Second of all, like there was a moment where they were they were moving towards banning the hijab in public for people under the age of 18. I thought that was way too authoritarian. Like I don't support that. But there are many other things that I think are warranted and very ideologically consistent. Okay, and also in their own laicite. They're not ripping hijabs off women. No. They're just making it um illegal in certain places you can still wear a hijab in public in france um also i am i am in favor of most of their intolerance sometimes they go too far but most of their intolerance most of france intolerance of religion is justified sometimes like we highlight the, we we often highlight the time uh, the ones that we are not in favor of because that's newsworthy but most of it is great. I think most of the world needs to catch up to France's secularism. But as far as I know, they haven't chopped anyone's heads off for this. So not yet Saudi level. I mean, they, um, <laughs> historically, no <I'm> kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the beach life one. is also saying how about rules of the clothing at the beach okay i think the beach clothing rules are stupid because i just yeah. don't like the amount of authoritarianism of the government saying what you can and cannot wear like beyond just what is covering like your genitalia for example i think that's ridiculous also i think it's really stupid to be saying that you cannot wear burkinis at the beach because that is actually targeting muslims that are more moderate instead yeah. of the ones that are more hard hard line like a, a muslim woman who is going to the beach at all and swimming is already less islamic and conservative than one that is not doing it at all so i think they're actually targeting the wrong population with these laws i think there's like a lack of understanding um yeah yeah i mean one? yeah i mean that one i disagree with again most of their intolerance is justified this one i disagree with but even this one that I disagree with, still not Saudi level. I, I mean, I still, yeah. I don't think they beheaded anyone for this. Uh, <laughs> Cosmic Heathen says, laughs in guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> well, not recent. They haven't recently beheaded anybody. Not not over the hijab. Um, okay, Brit of Life saying, I saw a video a while back of a police officer ripping a hijab off a woman at the beach. Okay, s send that to me. I want to see that. Um, I, do, I would like to see that. I mean, that just sounds like that's not state policy. That sounds like an incident of police overreach and brutality. Yeah. Also, I'm it's surprised. Not policy like, if you see a woman, you literally go rip it off of her head. Yeah. How far? Back? I'm because, <laughs> because if it was recent, I would have think all the Islamic. I'm, I'm surprised all the Islamic channels I follow haven't uh, blown up over that. Um, but anyway, before we go to uh, the next news, people were complimenting the way you look with this new camera. Uh, uh, well, all Rebecca. credit goes to Babak. Okay, but you know, KP is saying Susie is looking tasty. <laughs> uh, that's a two. Sati is assume... pronouncing how I say guillotine. Okay, yeah, I can't. It's... Okay, we've just accepted the oh fact that I say nothing correct on this show, and I don't appreciate the fact that you're not even even close to being goddamn French, and you're correcting me on this too. <laughs> If people are going to come after me for how I pronounce things, at least be from there, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> Stay in your lane so I can catch a break. <laughs> That's good. Mm. First, we had Indians correcting you on your Indian. Now we have Indians correcting you on your French, German, everything. <laughs> it's brutal out here, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Soon they will correct you in your English if they keep at it. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, I've had friends, right. my friends who were like, yeah, immigrants correct me on my English before. So, <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca, our bread of life in the live chat, she corrected, she, people have been making fun of me for so many days after she showed up on our Persian show because there was a, I, I was, they, they, they keep, they clipped that moment and everybody's referring to it. <laughs> they clipped because, you? Yeah, because they're trying to make fun of my Persian. So there was a moment in the show that I say, what's the word for this in Persian? And Rebecca comes with an answer before me. 
oh, and they were like this that's embarrassing they keep trying to use that as embarrassing me that rebecca an american who's learned persian has came up uh, yeah that was bad what was the like word they, i forgot i have to go check it was it um, an no that was another story Oh, okay. I know how to say apple in Persian. What are you talking about? Too. That's why I wanted to say it. Seeb. <laughs> are you suggesting I don't know how to say apple in Persian? Like, yes. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll slap you. I'll, I'll slap you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, you know what? You can always say that your Persian is better than the freaking president of Iran. So. True. I have that. Um, they can go shop. Very good. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I, I have had um, university professors on my show, and I said the words in certain words in Persian with them that they couldn't come up with. Okay, so Rebecca just had one moment. Okay, that's like that's different. It was okay. a fluke. She got <laughs> lucky. She got lucky. Okay. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.